I created this animation a few weeks ago and I had many requests concerning the workflow I use for the tire burnout. So today I'm going to show you how I did that in Blender and it's a beginner tutorial, so as usual, it will be easy. So let's start just after this quick shout out. For the cyber sale, my car animation across the ride is 30% off. It provides everything you need to start your car animation journey. It's the perfect course if you're a beginner in Blender or if you want to get better at car animation. We will cover everything from the basic stuff to the advanced car animations. Not only you will get 64 videos and 11 hours of lessons, but you will also get tons of assets, buildings, cars, city props, etc and my add-on HDY magic to create realistic animations. And on top of that, I will be personally there to assist all my students when they need help. Okay, so this is the setup for my scene. I have the car animation done. It's a simple setup. So the car is spinning a bit and starts uh, its ride. And by the way, I use launch control to do this animation, which is also 30% off. I will put the link in the description. And just in case, let me show you how I did the spinning. So I did use this control right because if I remove this animation let me do that now you can check here the final result you will see there is no spinning so the car is just starting normally and this is not what we want for our animation so here at frame 42 I added a keyframe at zero rotation for the x-axis and then at frame 56 I added the 1022 degrees so we have this spinning effect and I think this spinning animation is important to motivate the tire burnout that we see in my scene. Okay, now for the smoke, in Blender, you have two main elements for a smoke simulation. You have the emitter, so it could be anything. I will just draw a circle, a perfect circle. <laughs> and you will have the smoke coming from this emitter. And according to your settings, the smoke will raise quickly or will go on the side, etc, etc. So we have this emitter. But the smoke will not go in your entire scene. The smoke will be contained in what we call a domain, right? So if the smoke reach the end of the domain, it will stop, okay? The simulation will stop. Or it can bounce on the domain, it's up to you in the settings. So it means that if you want the smoke to go there, that's not possible at the moment because the domain stops here. So if you want the smoke to go there, you will have to change the size of your domain and then only the smoke will come here. So let's start by creating the emitter. So for the emitter, let's create a cylinder. So shift A, mesh and a cylinder. And here for the cap, we want nothing. Okay, be sure to have nothing here. And then let's make a rotation on the Y axis, 90 degrees to be like that. Now we move the object next to the tire, something like that. Let's hide the bones. So here I click on bones and three to be on the side and control three to be on the other side. So I have the cylinder selected and I can move it. You see this little dot, this is the center of the cylinder. So I can move it here, around here on the car and scale S to scale down, something like that. Okay, the idea is to have this cylinder around the tire. So I will change the Z, all right? I will go in wireframe mode to have a better view. Okay, now I can do that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's go back in solid mode. When you're happy with the result, you can duplicate it. So Alt D and G and X to move it on the other tire. So yeah, something like that. Then you select the two emitters and Control and J to join them. So we have only one mesh and let's create a new collection to keep things organized. So right click, new collection. Let's name it Smoke. And let's move it inside. So M to move and Smoke. Let's apply the scale, so Control and A and apply all transform. Now you go in edit mode by pressing tab and you activate the X-ray here. You press one on your keyboard to go in the front view and you select the upper part of the mesh. Yeah, something like that. And you press delete vertices. So at the end, we only have those parts and that will be our emitters. So let's rename emitters here. 
Perfect. And now to create the domain, it's very easy. You have the emitters selected. You go in object, quick effect, and you select quick smoke. And boom, now we have our domain. And I forgot we will really need to parent the emitters to the car. So you select the mesh and shift and click on the car and control P to parent and object keep transform. So now if my car is moving, the emitters is moving with the car. Perfect. Now we can start to update the settings. Okay, so let's see the result. So I press spacebar and nothing happens. Okay, so in order to fix that, you will have to click on the domain, right? And one thing we will do a lot is to change the resolution divisions to change, to update the, the, the settings, to update the behavior of the domain and the smoke simulation. This is a way to refresh and to update things, right? So let's try it. Let's try to put it, uh, to put 64. Let's try to use 64 and I press spacebar and nothing happens. Okay, so why? Because here we are asking to start the simulation at frame one and to end at frame 250. But here my animation is only from frame 27 to uh, 88 because this is the, the, the part that I want from my animation. So in that case, if you're like me, you should not start at one. You should start at the real animation here. So it's 27 and I'm ending at 88. So here 88. And now if I test the animation, I press play. Now we have a smoke simulation, right? And once again, don't forget if we change something, we change the resolution as, as well. So you go from 32 to 64. Those are very low resolutions. It's not good looking yet, but at least we can see a result and we can see the behavior of the smoke. Cool, our smoke uh, simulation is working fine. Let's check the emitter values. So you click on the emitters here and then you go on this tab, the physics tab. The emitter should already set to flow because we have selected quick effect smoke. Okay, so it should be already uh, flow. Flow type smoke, behavior inflow, that's correct. Use inflow, yes. And here, sampling substeps. It says number of additional samples to take between frames to improve quality and fast moving flows. And we are going to use a fast moving flows. So for my test, so I went for eight here. Smoke color, we don't need that yet. And absolute density, yes. And here, the initial temperature. The higher the value, the quicker the smoke will rise. And we don't want that for our uh, tire burnout for our smoke simulation. So I will use a value of 0 0.2. Okay, for density, we don't touch yet. We will come back later. And for the mesh, okay, is it a plane? Yes, it's a curved one, but still a plane. It's not a volume. So it means that we need the smoke to come from the surface of uh, this uh, plane. And uh, surface emission is 1.5. It means that the smoke will raise, will appear slightly uh, after, not not stick to the to the plane. Okay, and and we don't want that. We want the smoke to be just on the the emitters. Okay, so we select one, and then of course we want an initial velocity. We're gonna use the source one, yes, but we don't need one. We need 0 0.5 is enough for the y value. Look at the dire direction of my animation. So my direct my animation is going on the minus y. This is the forward axis, okay, minus y. But the smoke will go on the other side. So we need to go on the other side. So y direction, not minus y. So y direction is correct. And let's select four meters per second. And for the z, I don't want the smoke to rise too much. So I will apply uh, a pre pressure on the smoke. So minus five. Okay, so that's it for the emitter. If we test the result now, let's go back here and we change the resolution to 64, as I told you, and now we test. Okay, so we have now a different behavior. Okay, that's, that's way better than what we had before. Great. Now let's focus on the domain. So you click on the domain and you will have the settings here. So it's type domain, domain type gas, 
And the resolution divisions is actually 64. It's a very low, and this is for testing purposes. But when we will render the final result, we will go at uh, 256 and even 512 if your computer can handle that. For my case, I didn't touch those values. For the border collisions, let's place the domain correctly. So I will place here around there. So it means that I want my smoke to collide with the bottom part. So I will check this and we want an adaptive domain. So what does it mean? Let's size our domain properly. So here, if I go here, the dimension X, yes. And I want around 26 meters and maybe 4.6, something like that. And I want the domain to be just not too close from the car because I want the smoke to go that way. And remember that we need uh, the domain to be there at this position if we want to see the smoke here. So yeah, I think it's correct. Let me check here. If I activate everything, yeah, we, can, we can't see the, the end of the domain. So it means that it's okay. Let's say this is the final size of my domain. So I like it. The issue is if we don't tick adaptive domain, when the simulation will start, it will calculate the smoke for the entire domain. Okay, so, and, and we don't need that. For example, if the car is there, we don't need it to calculate the position of the smoke here because there is no smoke. So we are wasting time on the calculation. So the idea of adaptive domain is he will adapt the size of the domain according to where it needs to be, okay, according to the, to the smoke, to the emitters. So this is why we check adaptive domain. For the margin, I don't need that much. Two is enough. And same for the threshold, we can use 0.05. And now uh, the buoyancy and the heat are very important for the, the look of our smoke. And in my case, I don't want the, the, the heat and the buoyancy to be uh, high because uh, high, as it says here, if you put your mouse here, a higher value results in a faster rising smoke and it's the same for the heat. So I went for minus five for my case. But don't hesitate to test your own values for all the settings I'm mentioning. Concerning the dissolve option, yes, I want my, my smoke to disappear, to dissolve at the time, but not that early. I will select 80 here. I want some noise and noise will bring some details to your simulation. So the strength, I went for 0.5. Scale 4 and time 0 0.2. All right. Okay, that's it for the values of the of the domain. And I will change the resolution so we can see the result and play. Okay, cool. It looks good. But now we do have an issue. Okay, so I like the, the look of the smoke. I mean, <laughs> I don't like it now, but I know that it will look good later. But the thing is, we have the simulation starting right now. Okay, and that's not good. Because the smoke is supposed to appear only when the, the car, the, the, the tires are burning. So maybe around here. Okay, so what we need to do is we are going to go back in the emitters and we are going to animate the density. So around maybe uh, here, we should have a density of zero and I press I to insert a keyframe. And I think around uh, here, we can go for 0 0.6 and that will be our final density. We don't need to go until one, it's up to you, but I find that the, the smoke is too dense if we go to one at this stage of the animation, it, it could be one if you want, but I think it can be one when there is a long drift or something like that, but not uh, a start animation like this one. So I prefer to stop at 0 0.6, but this is my preference. Don't hesitate to play with that if you want something else. So I change the resolution and I come back and let's play again. Now you see the adaptive domain doing its job. So now, you, as you can see, when it starts, there is no smoke in the beginning, right? So it waits until frame 45, and then only the smoke is there. Okay, great. We already have a good looking smoke. And now to give more details to our simulation, because as you can see now, 
it's looking good, but it's very linear, right? So what I like to do is to add external forces. So you press Shift A and you go in force field. You select turbulence, right? And let's place them, let's place one here. So I will move it around here behind the car because the smoke will come here as well. So it will have an effect on the smoke around here. And for this force field, I use a strength of two, size of one. I wanted some noise as well, so I used one. And then shift D and I copy this noise here, around here, and you can put another one if you want. Okay, this is my personal taste, but you don't have to do this step. This is my personal taste, so for this, I lower it to 0 0.5 and the same here just to, you know, to give some <laughs> madness to the linear animation, okay? So we want something different, not something linear for the animation. So let's test that. So now, now you can see that the turbulences are changing the, the shape of the, the smoke. So I really like that. And one more thing before we test the renders, because I didn't want the smoke to go through the wheels, I end up clicking on each wheel here, the tire, and you activate the collision for this one. You don't have to touch anything here. Kill particles is perfect, so you do the same on the other one. So this way, when the smoke will collapse uh, on the tire, it will disappear instead of going through. So, because it will uh, look very weird if it's going through the wheels. Okay, so don't forget to do that for each wheel. You select each wheel and you activate the collisions. Okay, so let's do a quick render to see how it looks like. Okay, so we can see that uh, we have a very gray uh, smoke and very dense. And I don't uh, like this. So we are going to change the material. You click on the domain. You open a shader editor here. And we will change just a few values. So here. I prefer to use 3.5 for uh, the here the density and for the color. Here you go in X and this is the color uh, I did use. It's uh, nearly uh, white, okay? So yeah, let's do another render. So here is the result with the new material and I prefer this version. Okay, it's less uh, gray, it's more white, and I feel that it is more natural looking. And when we will change the correct resolution, it will look very good. Okay, now that we are happy with the simulation, it's time to bake the smoke. So for the final values, I did use 512, but you can use a lower value. You come here in a type, and you change to modular. You check is resumable, and you will have to bake the data here and the smoke. Let me show you. So maybe I will use 32 just to show you an example. So I will bake the data. Okay, and now, because we have the noise, we can bake the noise. And the good thing is, if we don't like the noise, we can only rebake the noise. We don't have to rebake everything. So let's bake the noise now. So yeah, that's it. This is how I created my uh, smoke simulation. And don't worry if it takes a long time for the, for the bake, it's normal. But the good thing we did using this shading is that once it's baked, you can update the shading without rebaking everything. Of course, you will have to render everything again, but at least you will not have to bake everything again. Okay, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Don't hesitate if you have questions. I talk to you soon. Bye-bye.